we've always said we're going to spend 50% on digital marketing. So get the product out via digital means, we're a digital brand, so it makes sense. And the other 50% will be via smart partnerships. So choosing partners that sort of resonate with what we're trying to do and let them uh, distribute the, the SIM cards into those bases. Today we are joined by Calvin Collett, founder and CEO of Melon Mobile, which is a new mobile network that is soon to be launching here in South Africa. Today has come to give us into detail what Melon Mobile is all about. Welcome to the IT Web Show, Calvin. Thanks, Emma. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. First of all, Calvin, just to hear from you, what is Melon Mobile all about and how does it work? So we're an MBNO um, running off the back of MTN's network. What we've done differently is focused on a pure digital journey. So it's app-based. Uh, most of the support, self reca et cetera, et cetera, is done online. So there's no need for physical paperwork or anything else like that. So we've really tried to digitize the entire journey. I think the important thing to note, though, is that we do have people in the background who, who will support you. So the front end is all digital. We've made sure that as much as possible you can support yourself. But when you can't, you go through to a call center with actual people who there to assist. Um, and I think that's an important thing because often this goes wrong with digital. Uh, when you try and digitize things, you then don't think of the, let's call it the negative journeys or, or when things don't go right. So we've, we do have people in the background who can assist. And I understand there are a lot of MVNOs uh, in the market. So is the self-recurring aspect of it the biggest difference with the other MVNOs that are in the market? No, I think that's just one aspect. Our, the fact that you can build your own plan. So we've got the full flexibility. So if you go into that, we've got sliders, which you can choose the amount of data you want, the amount of voice you want, the amount of SMSs you want. Um, and it's not a prepaid or postpaid solution. It's uh, what we're calling a subscription. So think of it as Netflix as an example, where you go on, you, you, you choose your package you want, your subscription, and then you can change that at any time. So it's month to month. So if you choose a package, as an example, you slide your sliders to 10 gig, and 200 minutes and 50 SMSs, and next month you want five gigs only, you can change it. So it gives you the full flexibility. So no, self reek is just one of the aspects. It's the fact that, you know, the packages are self-defined. Uh, we really think the user journey is nice and simple. So there's a couple of aspects that we think we've, we've done completely differently to anybody else in the market. And I think those are the aspects that, if you're going to create a, a new MVNO, because it, I mean, there are quite a few out there and some of them are big brands. If you're going to compete against them, you actually have to do something completely different. And I think we've created a nice, fresh brand. I think it's, on the, on the one hand, it's, it's completely non-telco, uh, so, so that's great. And then the product set and USPs, so, or unique selling points that we've created for the product are, are such that there's a big differentiation. Awesome. Uh, before going any further, uh, Calvin, when are you actually launching the product and when did you start developing it? So we're launching next week, Thursday, the 13th of April. So it's exactly a week from today. Um, we started this journey uh, officially on the 1st of April uh, 22. So it's been ex just over a, a full year now. So it's, uh, it, it's been a hard journey, uh, certainly a, a lot a lot goes into a project like this, and especially when you're trying to develop something that no one else has done. So that's the, the, the journey. The thought behind this obviously started a long time before then. Um, and internationally, there are quite a few digital MVNOs out there. I think what we've done is completely different. But the, the original concept did uh, sort of stem from international roots. And why the name Melon, Melon Mobile? <laughs> It's, it's a good question. I think one of the things we wanted to make sure of was the name didn't have any connotations. You know, when the, the guys started to look for names, we had names like Blitz Mobile and so on and so forth. But names like that automatically have a connotation. Like Blitz means what? You know, it could be fast, it could be this, it could be that. We didn't want to have anything to it. We wanted a name that was, call it meaningless, so that we could build a brand and a personality around it. So um, 
and the mill and mobile and the alliteration around the M&M, it just worked for us. So it was really, that was the, the baseline uh, as to why we chose Melon as a name versus anything. And it was just to, to make sure that we could build a personality. And also maybe going back to the uh, Rika process, I, I, I heard uh, you said you can self Rika uh, yourself, uh, but we have had uh, challenges here in South Africa whereby, you know, um, the Rika process was used maybe for, sometimes people buy maybe a SIM card that is already Rika uh, and things to do maybe with SIM swap fraud and so forth. Mm -hmm. What measures have you put in place to make sure that, you know, these sort of things don't happen? I think it's the nice thing about the self Rika engine is that you can't commit fraud on it. You can't. It's very difficult to commit fraud on it. You know, mm. versus traditional Rika processes, there's a Rika agent. I mean, you can technically cause, you know, you can create fraud with a, an agent. Here you're dealing with software, so it verifies your ID book against your a selfie, against the, the national database of persons registry. So that makes sure that your photos match across all all of the things. So it, it limits the amount of fraud. I, I can't say there's no fraud. I, I don't think any, any system can say that. But this way certainly limits the amount of fraud that could potentially happen. Mm. And, and in the event that maybe uh, someone has lost their phone, I know like uh, normally one would go maybe to a, a retail shop to do like a SIM swap. How do you uh, do that as a Melon Mobile? You can do it online with us. So the one way would be to WhatsApp. So we've got a we've got multiple channels. WhatsApp's one of them. You can Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You could call us as well, and we'll block that SIM immediately, and then send you a brand new SIM. So that entire SIM swap process happens online. Um, you could also log in onto the our self help portal and do the SIM swap there as well. Mm. Uh, you said that you are looking to launch next week, uh, Thursday. Yes. If you can maybe perhaps give us an indication of how many subscribers are you targeting, uh, maybe in a year's time? So I think this is, uh, it's, uh, there's some important points around this. So South Africa's got just over 101 million active SIM cards at any time. So, you know, a lot of guys are asking us what target market we're going after. Are we going over low, high? We're going after the middle. So it's 18 to 45 year old, digital and tech savvy, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a nice chunk of the market. When you're asking for exact numbers, we think that there's a, a large target market inside that 18 to 45 digital and tech savvy. And you know, if we can get anything from you know, 0.5% to 1% market share over five years, that's the kind of numbers we're looking for. Mm. And also, uh, the other thing with uh, the South African market, South African consumers tend to be loyal to the brands that they are used to, like your MTNs, your Vodacoms. Uh, what plans do you have to make sure that maybe you can attract new customers to your new platform? So I think it's the, the main things for us is the simplicity of sign up, the fact that you can self up, the flexibility, so you're not locked into monthly plans, and the fact that if you're a traditional prepaid customer, there's certain things that you can't do, your pricing's more expensive, here you're getting the benefits of postpaid without the lock-in of contracts. Mm -hmm. So I think there, there are enough benefits out there, and with us looking for you know, a 0.5 to 1% market share, um, there are enough people that, in my view, that will be attracted to it. Um, Pricing-wise, I think we're also well-placed. We're cheaper than the, the primary MNOs, which means that we, there's enough value in the product. So I think, the combination of value, simplicity, and sort of freedom uh, around contracts and, and the flexibility, I think there's enough to attract users to the product. Mm. Maybe if you can also maybe describe the sort of uh, packages uh, that you have. So as I was saying, we actually don't have packages. We've got five that are configured for you, let's say configured, because they're not actual packages. It's all based on your selection. So every single person could technically design their own package, and they could change that package every single month. So there's, we do have five predefined, but that's just to give people guidance um, more than packages, because our view is that the, the old traditional way of creating packages as a wine size fits all is just archaic, and it makes more sense to, to have the flexibility that we offer. Well, so let's say I've chosen a monthly I've selected for myself a package, maybe say one gig of data, maybe 100 minutes uh, of voice. 
uh, maybe 100 SMSs, and I ran out of that uh, in the middle of the month. Yep. How do I top up? So when you'll get a notification inside the app, so that's great. And the app actually has a full interface. So you can actually view the, its, it's um, a little pie chart or sliders. So you can actually see how much data you've used, how much voice you've used, etc. So it's visible within the app. And then there's a top-up option. So the second you're running out of data, you click the plus sign, you slide how much data you want, how much voice you want, click uh, pay, and, and the data is yours. So it's all immediate. And... The, the, the calculations in the app are immediate. So if you use 100 meg of data, you'll see that your, your data deduction will go down by 100 megs. If you use five minutes, it'll, it'll reduce by five minutes. So it, it's a real-time system. So the app is the center of your world in, 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 this, in, in this instance, and you use the app to navigate whatever you need to do. So if you need to upgrade your package, you need to add top-ups, et cetera, et cetera, it's all done there. Mm. And also, the, one of uh, the other challenges that we have had is about uh, data which just expires, maybe from other uh, telco operators. Um, what plans do you have to make sure that maybe your subscribers don't experience such frustrations of their data ex expiring? So there's two things. So our data doesn't expire, okay? But the only thing to keep that is to make sure you've got an active subscription. Okay, so if you've got an active subscription, your data doesn't expire. I think the, the other thing is because you've got the flexibility to change your packages all the time, technically data expiration shouldn't be a major issue anyway. Um, it doesn't expire, so it, it doesn't matter. But because you're not forced into a 10 gig package and you're only using two or three gigs, the, it, does, it changes that. So if you see, a, geez, so you use 10 gigs, only need three. Next month, to change your package to a three gig package. So you can really start to get smart in terms of the configuration of packages. But mm -hmm. our data doesn't expire. So how much maybe is a gig of data on Melon Mobile? So a single gig is 60 Rand, um, but there's a, very quite, there's a very steep curve. So you know, six, uh, 60 Rand for one gig, but then it goes down to sort of 25, 15 Rand, depending on if you've got a 50 gigs, 100 gigs, et cetera. So it's quite a steep curve down, depending on how much data you buy. So mm. it's not a flat, uh, uh, flat structure. Mm. Uh, can the users also access maybe 5G? Totally. So mm. our network supports 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. Mm. Um, and there's no price differential on any of those. So, so uh, just out of interest, uh, Calvin, uh, with your uh, background from MTN, is that why you are piggybacking on the MTN network? Why MTN rather than other I players? think there, there are two reasons. Um, so certainly the relationship with MTN and having been there is, is, is an aspect. But I think the, the thing I like the most is that MTN have a clear separation between wholesale and retail, um, which is important if you're going to go into this business. You want to make sure that the wholesale division is looking after us and the retail division is not interfering because um, that's where it could technically get a little bit, uh, you know, veering on, on, on the, the sides of, of competition. So that's really nice because they've got that very, very aligned and clear. Plus, they're the number one network in South Africa um, if, you, if you look at the various benchmark tests. So that just made sense. So those are the, the, the primary reasons. And at the time, Vodacom hadn't launched their the MVNO offering when we want to, do, to get into it. So those were the, the primary reasons mm. um, for choosing MTN. Which also brings the, uh, my next question. Um, like, in, uh, Telcom recently announced that they also want to enter this uh, MVNO space. Uh, Vodacom, perhaps uh, anytime soon, perhaps it's because of uh, the spectrum that they, they exactly. recently uh, got. Uh, how is the business uh, growing from an NVNO uh, perspective? Like what are the biggest advantages of a consumer like myself getting in, uh, onto the N MVNO rather than the traditional big players? Look, I think it depends on, the, on I mean, it's a broad question, and I think it depends on, on the individual network. Um, mm -hmm. What we're seeing at the moment is there are a lot of MVNOs coming through the system. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna depend on, 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 on specific offerings. You know, I think they, you know, our, our, our unique offering is the fact there's digital self-help and so on and so forth. So there'll be users that are attracted to that. That's not for everybody, sure, but there's certainly a, a, a section of the market that we're attracted to that. 
Um, and I think other MVNOs have got to look for other niches that, that suit their market and, and the, the target market that, that will suit them. I don't think there's a one size fit all. And if you take international um, standards or, or international trends for MVNOs, they typically around 15% of, of the market. South Africa's got 2%. So there is significant space for uh, MVNO players. So we're pretty confident that, that there's enough space for us. Um, but I don't think there's space for too many more MVNOs um, unless they're going to find specific niches and focal points that they, they point the product towards. Mm. And from a distribution uh, point of view, uh, what plans do you have? So we've always focused, we've always said we're going to spend 50% on digital marketing. So get the product out via digital means, we're a digital brand, so it makes sense. And the other 50% will be via smart partnerships. So choosing partners that sort of resonate with what we're trying to do and let them uh, distribute the, the SIM cards into those bases. But once again, it's got to make sense for us and for them. So th that's what we're doing. And then we'll start to put it in store. Um, and I think because of the self rica option, ultimately our SIM cards are, are pieces of plastic with in a cardboard wrapping. So they have no value until you actually activate them on the app. So we can actually just distribute them through, through a, a retail store without having to do the, the in-store self rica or, or in-store RICA, um, which is quite a big benefit because that's, that can be quite a painful part of any journey is having to walk into a retail store. You just want a SIM card, but you can't just get a SIM card because you need to go through the, the in-store RICA process. So here yeah, you can walk into a retail store and just walk out with it. So um, I think that's a big benefit. We, ha we, we haven't signed any of the, the retail stores, but once we do, we'll, we'll certainly update you. And how much would this SIM card cost? Look, we'll sell it for one rand. Okay. Um, the aim is, look, we, we, we're currying um, SIM cards to people, so it just makes sense for us to choose a distribution method that would be cheaper, and obviously retail would be significantly cheaper. Awesome. Uh, just, I, I know you're excited, uh, Calvin, about uh, the new offering that you're launching, uh, Melon Mobile, but we also understand uh, you are not someone who is new uh, to this ICT industry. Uh, you have been involved with, from start with uh, Supersonic, which is uh, MTN's uh, fiber offering. Uh, you have also had a company called uh, iConnect, uh, which was involved in, in VoIP. Uh, where are these companies now and what have you learned uh, from these companies to start this new product that you are, you, you are launching next yeah, year? Yeah, I buy it. They're all still around. Um, and I think there's, if there's one thing we've learned is to really focus on the customer as the center of, of everything you do. You know, I think sometimes you, you tend to have product-led uh, visions, et cetera, et cetera. The product's obviously important, but as long as you put the customer at the center and let the product definition come off the back of what the customer wants, needs, et cetera, et cetera, and then create simplicity around that, I think you're in for a, a winning product uh, set and launch. And I think if, there, if there's something I've learned to that is, is certainly trying to build it around the customer and then the product versus the product and then trying to find a customer fit. Mm. Maybe as an NVNO, I was, uh, always wondered also, like the telecoms regulator, ICASA, is said to be uh, auctioning more spectrum. Is it something that also affects you as an NVNO? It affects us indirectly, but it does affect us because the, the more spectrum that the, the MNOs get, the better their networks get, which means the more stable their networks are, which means the better product we can offer on the back of their networks. So it's, a, it's an indirect benefit, but it is a benefit nonetheless, and it makes sense for us. Now, I think there's enough spectrum right now, and I think the, it's, it's great to see. I mean, the more we, we go around, I see 5G popping up on my phone everywhere. So the networks are certainly utilizing that spectrum. And the, the more they utilize the spectrum, the more stable the networks get, the better quality you'll get, and the more throughput you'll get. So yeah. those are always direct results of spectrum. So, you know, um, it's certainly important benefits that come out of the spectrum. So, yeah. and, and I think it's, it's often uh, overplayed and, and, and sometimes the, the networks get beaten for, for that. But spectrum is a really important part of it. And I think it's, it's an exciting time for, for South Africa since the, the spectrum au auction. Um, that has happened, and it's, it's, it'll be great to see what comes out of it. But especially with 5G and the massive amount of, of spectrum and uh, data throughput that's required, I think it was an important milestone. 
Awesome. Thanks a lot, uh, Calvin. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to uh, Calvin Collett, uh, founder of uh, Melon Mobile, which is set to be launching next week, uh, Thursday. Uh, we are all looking forward to the launch of the product. And uh, thanks, Calvin. I'm sure I'll train you at the launch on, on, on Thursday. Fantastic. I look forward to seeing you there. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thanks. <laughs>